Greetings, Earthlings. This is Dr. Smock, Falcon Cultural Observer here on Earth, checking out what are these fascinating interests of human geekdom. So this week, thanks to Walt Disney Studios in Malaysia, we got invites to a Marvel Studios movie called For Ragnarok. Doesn't quite fit as well as the associated Marvel superheroes seen in this movie. Any kind words to start off, Captain? Thank you, Mr. Oh, today's Doctor. Mr. Doctor? <laughs> Mr. Doctor Smog, yes. Yes, hi everybody, it's Captain here. And uh, yeah, I was very excited. Thanks to Disney, Malaysia, and also Outpost Productions. We got to watch the previous screening of Thor Ragnarok, woo, woo Yeah, and I can't help but uh... Ah! Ching, 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 ching. Okay, yeah. That's great, we will talk about the music later. Ah, uh, okay. So it's Thor a... Ragnarok is the third movie in the, shall we say, Thor trilogy of Marvel Studio movies. Mm. It's his third solo outing. This time Thor returns to save Asgard against nefarious forces posed by Hela, the goddess of death. Joining him is an unexpected allies, which we'll talk about later, which forms another superhero team in the cosmos, adventuring and dealing with um, the end of the world, or the end of the cosmos, as explained by Ragnarok, yeah. which is in Norse mythology, is a great battle leading to the death of many gods. Twilight of, Twilight of the Gods. Twilight of the Gods. Yes. Yes. So let's speak first about the characters in Thor Ragnarok. Of course, returning to the helm, the movie is Thor himself, played by Chris Hemsworth. The God of Thunder um, has not been seen since the Avengers: Age of Ultron movie. He was solely absent from the Captain America America's Civil War saga. Um, with explanation of him having some time out with an Australian called Daryl. You will find more about that in a short film in the Doctor Strange Blu-ray release. More about our visit in a little bit. Uh -huh. Over to the captain. Yeah. And of course, when there's Odile Sung, there's also a Luffy Sung, but actually here. Yeah. This is Loki, and he's back again, the most uh, beloved, and I think the longest lasting villain in the uh, Marvel MCU currently, yes. And uh, yes, played by Tom Hiddleston, oh, the girls love him! Yeah, and so it's a big um, reason why he's back. But still, it adds so much color and adds so much um, uh, brotherly love to the saga and the series. So it's, it's nice to have him back. I think that was to say there is ample romance in this movie. Yes, or something solely. Uh, yeah. yeah, but when they said like Civil War didn't have Thor, yeah, because there was something else going on. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, but anyways, yeah, a bit on that later. <laughs> also, making a cameo in this movie is Dr. Stephen Strange. The new master of mystic arts in his Sanctum Sanctorum in New York. We also saw him briefly at, well, not so briefly, but we had this movie one year ago where his origin was foretold and towards the very end of the movie there was an end credit scene involving mm. Doctor Strange and we think Thor discussing the whereabouts of Odin and circumstances surrounding his half-brother Loki. So today, I am also experiencing cosplay of Dr. Stephen Strange, but Vulcan version. May the arm of Magamoto allow you to live long and prosper. Yeah. So Captain, how about our next major unveil of the characters, which is no secret in all the trailers? Yes! He's big! And he's mean and he's green. 
they have the Hulk. Very, very early, we already know that the Hulk is in uh, this movie. And uh, yes, he's not only this, but he has a, now comes with accessories. Yes, he's gladiator version of the Hulk. And I shall pulled him in front of Mjolnir. Well, uh, Loki may want to step a bit further no, yeah. after his um, beat down in the Avengers. Yes. <laughs> yes, he's beat down. But okay, so when you have the Hulk, you also have Bruce Banner. And so I'll put him here in a nice scale of uh, the collection. So yeah, just such a nice scale. Is that that's what Marvel Legends? Good. Banner. Dr. Banner comes from a toy series by Hasbro called Marvel Legends, mm -hmm. while the imposing visage of Hulk oh, here yeah. is from Diamond Select Toys, although mm -hmm. not from the version as seen in Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. Also to highlight, Bruce Banner is played by Mr. Mark Ruffalo, mm -hmm. and I did fail to mention earlier that of course, uh, Dr. Steven Strange himself is played by um, the ever popular Benedict Cumberbatch. Mm -hmm. Perhaps yep. he'll be more popular if he adopts my hairstyle. No, maybe not. Or maybe a bit white. Or maybe the ears. <laughs> also to add that the Incredible Hulk was last seen two years ago in the events of Avengers Age of Ultron. Seen flying away on the Quinjet into the horizon somewhere. He is, like Thor, he was also absent from the events of Captain America Civil War. And the circumstances around that will be explained in this movie. Mm. Yeah, interesting fact trivia. I read that this time Mark Ruffalo is going to uh, you know he is cap is the motion cap for Hawk as well as the voice for Hawk and uh, that has not been uh, shown before in any of the movies. Uh, previously it was still done by Lou Ferrino and uh, yeah I thought it's an interesting uh, extension of uh, Mark, Ruff Mark Ruffalo's uh, talents and also ability yeah, for this movie. Something to look forward for. To miss our not so jolly green giant from the Marvel Universe, you will get to see a lot of Hulk in this movie, including some scenes without pants. Mm. <laughs> so our arch nemesis of this movie, Thor Ragnarok, is Hela, the goddess of death. Yeah, that's so nice, man. Wow. Such an imposing visage with these roosting horns. In the movie, they are, the horns do sort of have some articulation, but not this action yes. figure, which is made by as Marvel Legends. Um, Unfortunately, it comes with an extra additional hip here. Yes. Skill. So, Hila is played by Kate Blanchett um, in the role that she is well known as Galadriel from The Law of the Rings. I think Hila is the exact opposite of the very peaceful, motherly Galadriel. In a way, I would almost say that this is would be the evil version of Galadriel should she have succumbed to the power of the One Ring. <laughs> yes. We're very thankful to yeah, the Hobbit series for just showing a flash of that. I thought it's quite interesting. Oh, wow. You can pull some that. Right. And there's some significance of this in the movie. <laughs> okay, we shan't spoil it definitely again. We will have a mention later when spoilers come out in the spoilery section towards the end. Oh, okay. Oh. So about the movie itself, Captain, what is your take on the overarching plot? Which I think, in a very quick summary and does not contribute any spoilers, if you have watched the trailers, mm. Thor faces Hela. He loses Molnir, his mystical hammer forged mm. by the metal of a dying star because Hila is simply so overwhelmingly powerful. Badass. The, Badass. Yes. And in that um, along that journey he ends up on a far away planet called Shakar whereby he is put in the gladiator arena to fight other worthy opponents which of course turns out to be the Incredible Hulk. AKA yeah. a friend from work. A friend from work indeed. Uh, Loki is along for the adventure. As well as a new character called Valkyrie. Which will have some major role in this story as well. Yep. Uh, the planet Shakar is 
rule govern or sort of um, the figure of authority is called the Grand Master. A very colourful and eccentric character played by Jeff Goldblum. So the adventure ensues from that and to say much more would be going into spoilery territory. Yes. However, I would say this is not the first time we've seen the Grand Master. Yeah, apparently he appears in the end credits of Guardians of the Galaxy 2. If you watched it, like, yeah, the credits. Yeah, I guess, yeah. So, Captain, what have you got to say of the, say, visual presentation of this movie, which does seem to differ very much from the previous four episodes? Well, first, I'll start off with something that I might say throughout this video. Hashtag, it was hella good. I'll start off with that. <laughs> yeah, it, it was actually very different, and uh, I think the, 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 by the time the first trailer was revealed, uh, it already set the pace, the tone, the color tone, and also the feel of uh, the, the movie that was uh, up going to you know uh, be in is like you know Thor and Rock, and uh, knowing that also the fact that there were three different directors for each Thor movie. And you know, three different uh, composers also for each different Thor movie. So like, whoa, you know, it's gonna expect something different. Uh, first one was uh, Kenneth Brennan, uh, Kenneth Brennan. So that was very theatrical, and I thought it was a very good uh, stage for that. Thor: Dark World was pretty much uh, straightforward uh, to tell a tale, to give more depth to the characters and uh, and Asgard and all its uh, mythology and the history behind it. And this one, you know. It's the wild card, it's the you know, Return of the Jedi kind of thing, we don't know what to expect, but it's going to be epic. So, the first thing that I read was that James Gunn was a director of Guardians of the Galaxy and also a writer, was ecstatic and was raving about it after the premiere in, uh, in America. And um, that was <laughs> definitely a good sign, which I think, uh, because I, I quite favor uh, James Gunn's wit and also his uh, visual. Um, yeah, styling of the movie and after watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 I was like wow that's so yeah color uh, how should I say retroly colored or even psychedelically colored and um, you use the powers uh, to hold oh wow I'm thinking of some of Mr. Doctor's powers that yeah and uh, so after watching Guardians of the Galaxy 2 yeah wow then then Thor Ragnarok's trailer is also as colorful as that I was actually really really looking forward to it and I was yeah like I said it was hella good and I really enjoyed the journey and really enjoyed the ride of this movie and I do think wow it took it up a notch from Guardians of the Galaxy 2 of being real out there and you know yeah Guardians of the Galaxy of course it's outer space you know taking advantage of other planets and traveling to other dimensions and all oh, no, so that, is this movie which takes place largely off earth Mm. Like Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. Um, except for brief scenes in my Sanctum Santorum. Yeah. And New York. Oh, and Norway. No. Oh, the yeah, Norse gods, after all. Yeah. Sorry, I should not say more, lest it's more oh. spoiling. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, wow. So, again, travelling to Shakar, a different place. Yeah, they took a lot of liberty in really making it out there, pushing the boundaries. When you watch it, you will know. Uh, you, you will enjoy it, yeah. So it seems like Guardians of the Galaxy. It was a very colorful Marvel universe. No, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There I say even more colorful in of the space of compared to Star Trek and so forth. Mm. Um, we see different worlds, different colors, many colors, and and also supported <coughs> by some very what would you say retro pounding music. I well. Yeah, and you, yeah. Let me take it back a notch. Like uh, usually, sometimes when you show trailers, they will choose music that you know, like very compact, like that. You know, that kind of thing. And then when you watch the movie, it doesn't appear. I'm so disappointed, right? But I'm very glad that the song, the immigrant song by Led Zeppelin, is used in this movie. In my limited examination of human comics, the trailer communicated very comic feel but epic like scenes oh, translated wow. from 2D to what you see in the 3Ds, the side of the Valkyries, the slow oh, yeah. motion of Hila with the horns and um, and 
it is a fairly fast-paced movie. Oh. Mm -hmm. And I think unexpectedly so, it turned out to be very humorous. <laughs> Although that is still something that I am trying to understand of human culture. But would we almost say that this is an action comedy movie? Would that be accurate? Yeah, I think I, I think it's one of the funniest ones and um, they did it. I, I think if it's possible to say that I actually took it to another level. I, I did hear some uh, friends or fans, you know, talking about it that, you know, they didn't like that it was too much of that. But I think, uh, you know, knowing that it's a Disney uh, production and also if you can deconstruct the uh, a part of uh, the storytelling in a Marvel MCU for like Civil War, you know, you can deconstruct it. I don't see why you can't take it to, you know, another place. Uh, where like you know comedy <laughs> and also you know resides there so yeah i thought that that still works yeah and it, that makes it certainly safe to watch for all ages unlike certain other marvel franchise franchises which has gone for that recent r rating in hopes mm. that it will sell more movie tickets so noting these few facets i mean what how would you captain summarize and rate this movie in your opinion what would you tell viewers out there Oh uh, well, like I just previously said, uh, Civil War was a uh, was really really serious Captain America Civil War, um, and um, uh, it was built up so much, uh, and then uh, you know the friendship of Tony Stark and uh, uh, Steve Rogers through the the Marvel MCU, and uh, you know come to a point where you know there was a deconstruction and it worked like, so it's like to take another turn on the, 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 the tale of life of the Avengers, of these superheroes. So Thor's also does, I believe, you know, comes to a point of maturity and, uh, but with a lot of humor, but also a lot of reality, but it still takes uh, the story to, uh, f takes the story further. And uh, as we all know, it's already announced that this movie sets up Avengers uh, Infinity War and uh, Yes, you're gonna watch it just to follow up with the series, but really, you'll be in for such a great ride. It's such an adventure. If you thought Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 was funny and colorful and exciting, this one is, yeah, even more, I'd say. Even more, I'd say, yeah. The feedback that I received that this third movie outing is the third movie outing, but it's still thoroughly enjoyable, <laughs> even if you have never seen any of the previous four movies. <coughs> Of course, it adds some context in the overarching plot of Phase 3 in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it's still an enjoyable <coughs> ride by itself. Excuse me. Now, as the captain has mentioned, it's also leading up to the events in Avengers 3, and we will definitely say you have to stay into the in credit scenes to watch that. Mm -hmm. um, would you like to add anything else about the in two in credit <coughs> scenes without going into spoilery territory? Well, about the scenes, eh? oh. in the scenes that this happens, I know I, <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it for you. But uh, anyways, there are two scenes: one in the mid credits and uh, one post credit scene. And uh, I can't believe that so far we've been talking about the movie and none of us, I, I neither one of us has said Taika Waititi. Yeah, that's the name of the director, and it's he's the reason why this movie is so different compared to all the other um, MCU movies. But pretty much falling after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Look yeah. out for him, Taika Waititi. <coughs> also a voiceover in one of the alien characters seen in mm -hmm. this movie. Um, another one which I think um, initially you think may just react without much interest, but that character may certainly grow on you and we will probably see more of him. Yeah, I hope so. It also okay. comes to, without going very much into spoiler territory that as the captain has said, this leads into Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. But noting which, there is still one other Marvel movie to come up before the Infinity War starts, and that would be Black Panther in February next year. Mm. But from having watched this movie, and we many of us know there was a trailer for Avengers Infinity War released in San Diego Comic Con mm -hmm. this July, and but has not yet been released Ah. publicly in true official okay. channels okay. Okay. and having digested this movie I can get a phantom of why that trailer has not been released mm -hmm. publicly yet 
but I am quite sure it will shortly, very soon after Thor Ragnarok has had its run in the cinemas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a that, that, that's a good guess because Black Panther opens I think end of February. Is it I'm not mistaken? February. End of February. So yeah, I think by Christmas or yeah, in a couple of weeks they have to release that pretty soon. Yeah. So Captain, how would you rate this movie on a scale of zero to ten, and what would you say to the Marvel fan boys and girls out there? Ooh. Um. Well, I'll rate it. Currently, 8.5 was very, very good. Uh, um, it might go higher, but I'm waiting to watch it in IMAX 3D uh, to, to see yeah, whether it will take it up another notch. Uh, from what I've seen, yes, I'm guaranteed, guaranteed to go and watch it in IMAX 3D just to see uh, what additional uh, yeah, delivery and uh, I don't know how, how, we, how we perceive it and how we enjoy the, the movie like, with the sound and visually also. But look for cameos, it's very exciting. And uh, there were more cameos than what uh, a few of us were expecting. Uh, yeah. There's certainly oh, yeah. some very surprising cameos. You have to keep your eye out for them. Mm -hmm. Of course, non surprising is the expected Stanley cameo. Mm -hmm. But it is Stand not man. Stanley as you may, may have seen him before. <laughs> also, to add on what the captain has said, <coughs> for those of you who may not be so inclined towards 3D vision in the cinema, mm -hmm. The other alternative options for a fantastic visual experience as well as audio would be the GSC Max screens as well as the MBO big screens. Mm -hmm. Highly recommended if you can find that in your nearby local cinema. Also on the point of the cinema promotions, we might also just like to highlight MBO has these Thor Ragnarok cups, there are the options, various options, this is with Thor's gladiator helmet, then there is also Thor's gladiator helmet, and a third helmet which I cannot recall at the moment, Vulcan logic seems to escape me, but what I would have really liked to have seen was actually a Fila <laughs> helmet. Yeah, that would be hella um, good. Yes, um, but, but it's probably a safety hazard to, to certain people in... See for children? Yes, like yes, yes. It might actually poke eyes out with those worst things. Yeah, it's like, Mommy, look at this! Hellas helmet and yeah. Yeah, it's like PG-13. All gone wrong, yeah. From TGV Cinemas, no, this is not the new Molnir hammer. This is a hammer used by the Incredible Hulk himself in the gladiatorial matches. It comes with a straw, which is not in the movie, but um, you may find this at uh, TGV Cinemas. Go grab them before nice. they run out. There is also some other s unusual accessories for popcorn and so forth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's a what, hot fist as well, right? Something like that. Yes, saw. that's a popcorn cup. Ah, yeah, hot fist, yeah. Bro fist, but you know, hot size, yeah. So before we finish up, we are just going to go now into spoiler territory of the captain and myself to say anything we really like to get off our chest regarding this movie. <laughs> well, I, I'm not one for spoilers, really. Uh, I, would like to ex uh, I would like to share all that you, to prepare you all to enjoy the movie. La. I forgot Man. to mention that <laughs> Heimdall is also a key player in this movie, played by Idris Elba. Uh, if you remember him from the previous movies, he is the keeper of the Bifrost and holds this giant yeah. sword which activates this rainbow bridge to the other realms. Yeah. But, going into spoilery territory, and maybe perhaps it is not spoilery, is because sorely missing from the cast list is Natalie Portman, who played Thor's love interest Jane Foster in the last <laughs> two movies. Yeah. Um, there might have been a brief explanation for it, it kind of escaped me in the dialogue. Mm. Do you recall any mention on what was the fate between their relationship? Oh, not the cause, but yeah, due to some, uh, yeah, uh, when he returned on Earth, uh, yeah, there were <laughs> some people, yeah, humans told the God of Thunder, yeah, and got dumped, you know, so, yeah, poor guy. <laughs> and then that was, that was it, I think they just left it at that, yeah. Knows that, uh, yeah. Realistically, uh, I believe Natalie Portman just did not want to do another Thor movie. Yes. So it was with uh, Idris Alba, I believe he has been stated to regretting being part of the Marvel MCU. I've read an article about that actually. So, but still, I'm glad that he is in this movie because he plays a key role. 
Yeah, three sum up, yeah. Should we add more about Loki himself? I'm sure fans of Tom Hiddleston would love to hear a few more words about the God of Mischief himself. Mm. Um, by now, he's been in, this is his what, fourth or fifth, fifth. fifth movie cinema outing. It is, in a way, the most recurring Marvel Cinematic Universe villain, uh -huh. or come not so much villain in this case, mm. that, that I'm sure it's a case that the Marvel Studios understands with the popularity of Loki, which may almost rival Thor himself, that it's a character they cannot just dump away and, you know, okay. it's a selling point. Yeah. All the fan girls have certainly things to look out for. There is a lot of Loki in this movie. Hey. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yeah, as there were articles written about, you know, how unfortunate Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe villains are, yeah, Loki is like the you know, last man standing or the longest man standing here. Yeah. Mm. And will it, is there news that will he be in Infinity War? I don't know. I haven't read that that far actually. Right. I'm just still enjoying Thor and Rock. It's always an interesting thing by the way Loki because if you recall, he was working for Thanos mm. in the first Avengers. Movie. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Right, and yeah. we know Thanos is the big bad master villain returning in Infinity mm -hmm. Wars. And mm -hmm. How would that play out for Loki? Perhaps switching sides again? Again, yeah, yo yoing between the sides, possibly. But I think it's still intriguing. So, I mean, that's why it's still around, and <laughs> Longest villain standing here. Yeah. yeah. So Thor Ragnarok is in cinema showing nationwide now as of 25th October night. You will find it in your friendly neighborhood cinema. Oh sorry, wrong hero. Hey. Um, yes, it is um, good for as a family movie for all ages. Go ahead and enjoy it. If you have liked what we have ranted about today, okay. a special insight from our guests and Dr. Smock's usual delivery, please subscribe to our YouTube channel that is the My Sci-Fi Fan Outpost. Also follow us on Facebook which is called Outpost Productions or with the name Outpost My. For the captain himself, he represents pop culture fun Malaysia and where can we find more about Pop culture fun. Oh, um, uh, we're on Facebook and uh, it's pop culture, uh, facebook.com slash pop culture fun, my my, uh, as well as on uh, our blog, uh, pop culture fun, my dot wordpress.com. Yep. Thank you very much. We all look forward to a fantastic outing at the Infinity Wall. So, a special call out to all cosplayers. We want to assemble the largest cosplay gathering of Malaysia's MCU cosplay when this movie lands in cinemas. Wow. So to you all, live long and prosper. Thank you very much for listening. Be cool. <laughs> ah yeah, now that it's not here, I got him out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to be back. Oh, Star Trek fans, special trivia for you all. Yeah, there's a... Uh, a lot of alumni in this in this movie itself. It's pretty cool. Yeah, as I earlier was saying that there's uh, Idris Elba who was you know the bad guy in uh, Star Trek Beyond. Then uh, there's uh, Scourge who is actually Doctor McCoy. Yeah, and uh, we also have uh, Benedict Cumberbatch who was Khan. You know, yeah, in uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. And not to forget Chris Hemsworth. Chris Helmsworth. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting a bit slurry. Uh, was George Kirk? Don't forget that in the first Star Trek movie. So yeah, all within the the, the Kelvin timeline. And uh, yeah, talk about uh, what like mid credits or post credit scene even for a video. So anyway, it's Captain signing off. Thanks, Outpost Productions. Outpost. Yeah, it's so slurry. Outpost Productions, Disney. Thank you for watching. Yeah.